Okay, we're going to try going over phase three now. Can everybody online hear me? My remote microphone battery died on me. Okay, I'll try to make sure that I speak up, but if you have trouble hearing, just make sure you uh, hang on the uh, on the chat. Okay, so we left off in phase two. So number two, keep going. That's where we get our prompt. That's number two, keep going. So, uh, with validation here is the function that just follow that one spot. So I'm going to call that phase three. Okay. What's the first thing we see here? What's what's this doing? Asking for Speak up. Light not highlighting it anymore. <laughs> digit a character a letter and a digit. Yep. A a in terms of data types, an integer, a car, and another integer. In terms of what you type on the keyboard, yeah, a number, a single letter, and another number. Separated by space, a single space. Scan out. Those are calls. Check to see if we actually got three values. If we didn't, cool. Okay, now we come down to here. So, what's going on here? Someone other than Karen. So what, uh, what we're saying is this reads in a, a number, a character, and a number. Make sure that it got three different values, and then wondering what's going on here with the uh, move, basically move and compare. Move, compare, and judicial jump, I should say. that do it look like whatever's in the body can add a rate position to move to ECS and you're gonna move whatever value goes to ECS into that uh, position of array right. and then compare it make sure there's seven I don't know what to say seven values or I mean seven and then so we have this R18, which is a local variable that isn't referenced before this. So it looks like it may just be a simple data type rather than a structure like an array. And this looks like it's just moving that value into there. So var, var D. What is var D? Or, or var D plus 1? I should do. Should that be a number as your, your the last thing of the number? Your... You think it's the last input number? Or is it? 
Pleasure? First input number. Yeah, it's the first input number because these are going, oh. remember this goes backwards. First argument, scan out, second, third, fourth, fifth. So that is actually the first argument is our string that we're reading. Second argument is the format. Third argument is the first value that it gets out of the format. So we're talking that's going to be d plus 1 is our first number. So our first number has to be, what's the saying? What's that, what's that condition? What's JA? Jump book. Jump group. Jump above. Yeah, jump if greater than. So it's going to take this green condition if it is greater than down here. Okay. Call the boom. So I guess the success for that condition gets you boom, whereas the failure for that condition gets you over here. So what what in order to get it to go down the failure, what do we have to make sure that our first number is? Yeah. Yep, less than or equal to seven. this next one be? One, one. The next one? Zero. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name all of these so it makes it easier to read. Now all of 
these are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And that's the first number is that way. So pick one of these. So just somebody pick one. Three. Three. All right. Three. And say we put in three. So what's it doing? To, to double check, you know, what is var d, we would cursor on it, so it highlights, we would look around, scroll out, oh, var d, over that var d plus one. Here's our var d, cx, it is the second argument, or the, the second value here, which is a single character. So there's going to be the character that you get. And we're comparing it against Bar one, which was set up in this switch statement. So, so far we have, what's the first value that we chose? Three. Three. And we have the third value, which is, yeah, 251. So, what's our character then, if we're comparing against 60? How do we uh, how do we find that out through a keyboard shortcut? You look through that ASCII table, <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, you can look through the ASCII table. So in the references, there was the ASCII table. Uh, there's also a shortcut that you can use R that will convert a uh, a byte. Um, represent, currently represented in ASCII to its, its ASCII equivalent or uh, vice versa. So just press R on that. And now we have, have that. So, what's the, uh, if we chose three as our first number, what's the, the full three values? 3K251. 3K251. That's the idea. And you do that for each of these. Just go through, okay, now I know how they're being used. I could just go, okay, or if it was two, it would be 2B755. If it was one, it would be 1B2. 
214, and so on. So we could do, let's do the three. So we'll do 3K51. And enter. Hey, we're halfway through. Um, halfway there, meaning not halfway through phase two, just halfway through all of the phases. This means, you know, now, uh, I mean, halfway through phase three. It means now we're on phase four. So I would go into my answers, 3K251, enter, make sure we have that new line, save. Still not password. I have a quick question. Yep. So when we're looking at the search table, how do we determine the first one was zero? Determine that the this first one. This is the first one. We can look at the switch state by time. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Here, let me. So the question was, how do we determine? that the uh, first value in the switch statement rather the first case is zero. We take a look at at this here. It's basically how where are we getting this this first number and that is zero. we determined that that was coming from our our first number because so I had renamed that local variable to first num to right. indicate that's coming from the first number that we input on the line. It's doing this compare, making sure that it's less than uh, or equal to seven down here, uh, taking that number, putting it in EDX, and then using it in this manner, EDX times four. Two. Right. So the when that EDX times four evaluates to zero, that's going to be our first value, uh, or rather our first, uh, yeah, our first now value in this table. And the way that EDX times four is equal to zero is when EDX is zero. So, follow that? Well, I guess my confusion is that you have, no, Seven offsets, right? Yeah. How do you know the very first offset was definitely zero, not one? But if it was indicates that the first offset value is zero, is zero. So the when we take a look at at our table here, so there's there's nothing else kind of funky going on here. Like if this was, if we had a in addition statement in here. Mm -hmm. uh, but say the num say instead of being between zero and seven, they wanted the numbers to be between one and eight. Fair enough, right? They would say, okay, let's take EDX and insert a a sub EDX one in here. And then they did the jump table EDX times four. That would mean that, okay, well, our first number. When you subtract one from it, then um, that uh, EDX uh, first number minus one times four equals zero, and you basically solve for the first number in order to see that uh, where the so instead of is zero, that would be is one. It's all in how it's how that first number is being used. You take it and you see, okay, it right. is moved into EDX, and then I understand. That. Okay. The part I don't understand is that when you renamed LOC underscore four zero one two six three, when you rename that to this zero. Yeah. Where does that correlate that the LOC underscore four zero one two six three is definitely when I'm doing this when my EDX is. Like where is the correlation on that one? So, okay, so let me, it may help to do, yeah, some memory here. So if we, so 
So if we take a look in here, so if we take a look in here, and and we see um, we see these. So if this here is our um, what was it? Uh, basically, basically the the jump table. Mm -hmm. Table. Uh, so this syntax here, where it has some kind of like you know x, that's a that's an array. So at table open paren, zero, close paren, that is the first value in this array. And that is your your log underscore oh, yeah. whatnot. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, sometimes it can help to draw out what is going on in memory, how things are being represented in memory. Um, the the assembly, uh, you know, C is is made fun of for its its use of pointer arithmetic. Um, assembly, you're getting even closer to the hardware. So being able to understand how things are being represented in memory um, will will help to uh, if you draw it out, will help to to understand um, basically what's what's being pointed to when and what is referring. 